polite society, then don't laugh. Don't laugh at Christian persecution. Don't well, do being it. Laughable is mean that the whole that's the whole the name is in the term. It's do laughable. not laugh. Well, you literally just laugh like when Candace I talked about Christian persecution. Is, don't do that ever saying. again. Not in my presence. Candace Owens and Don Lemon recently sat down for an interview, and it went exactly the way you would expect. We have Don asking her a bunch of ridiculous bad faith questions, and Candace Owens completely checking and destroying him for it. So I want to react to some of that in today's video, but folks. If you enjoy the content, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you are new. And without further ado, let's just get right into this because I think the best way to demonstrate how ridiculous this interview was is to just play this clip right here and let you see for yourself. So take a listen. So the word you said was right? Yeah. Is that exactly the word? So um, what did you mean by that? You think it's okay to say the word, to call people a f to their face? No, actually, I said words have meaning. And so, so right off the gate, we can tell exactly how this interview is going, right? Okay, but let's get into the substance now. So when you start allowing the perverts to dictate speech, then words just have to go away. And as I said in that clip, when I was growing up and I was reading English novels, when people say you're walking through the woods to get a faggot, it meant a bundle of sticks. And then they yeah. said, you can no longer say this word that has a real meaning, right? A bundle of sticks, because some pervert took that and threw it as an epithet towards gay people. I think that's actually, that's a, a wrong way of thinking, because then what you're doing is you're allowing perverts to dictate society. So I, I, so I don't like the death of the English language because ever, people are getting offended. So that's like, I could pick any word. I could say, you know, plant. And from now on, every time I see a gay guy, I'm going to be like, he's a total plant. And then eventually they say, you can't say plant anymore. It's like, no, no, no. This is a real word that has meaning. Attack the person who's yeah. perverting the word, but you don't you don't suddenly disappear a word and you say you can no longer say it. or You can no longer read these Virginia Woolf novels uh, because the word has been perverted. I don't think that's I think that's a backwards way of thinking. And by the way, I think a very true and valid point there from Candace Owens. How long are we going to continuously change language? Because it feels like we do this every 10 years. I'll give you a couple examples. The word midget, right? That's just what we call, you know, people with that condition. They're midgets. And then suddenly out of nowhere, we say that's offensive so the new term is now little people which in my opinion is like way more offensive than the word midget but there are many examples of this you know but truly if you ask me i think the real reason the left does this the reason they wage such a constant war on language is because what is language used for it's to communicate ideas it's so that we can you know actually talk to one another and i think by constantly perverting and changing around language and creating this mass confusion it makes it impossible to truly straightforward articulate ideas and maybe that's the type of society that they want because it's harder to challenge when you literally just can't even communicate you can't say things directly or understandably because you know that would uh, be a problem i guess for people with incoherent and non-understandable ideas right but okay you can read virginia wolf novels and the only people i know who who are trying to ban books uh virginia wolf uh, and other books that even say the N-word. I mean, it's conservatives. That That's who's trying to do it. I don't think that you should be banning books. I really? The left is not trying to ban books? Let's start with the Bible. Obviously, that's the most banned book in history. But uh, I think even to classic American literature, you know, Charlotte's Web. I, I read an article just now saying some schools were banning that because it was considered offensive to Muslims. There's some characters out there trying to ban Huckleberry Finn to kill a mockingbird. I mean, the list goes on. The left is uh, very adamant in banning books. And, you know, apparently we've just forgotten about this. Like, that's not true. They've been trying to ban books for years, for years because they say everything written before like 1980 is too offensive because they said this or this character is portrayed like that look at even old disney movies how many of those have been censored or changed it goes on and on actually but i do know candace mm -hmm. um that words language evolves over time and when people say that word to me they're not calling me a cigarette no, not well, obviously, bundle, that's the point. It has a context. Of, yeah. So if you want to punish that right. person because they're saying that offensively, that, you know, if, if you if you feel that this person, but it's not fair to then say to everybody else who's not using that word, that this word has now been banned. I just think that's ridiculous. You know, yeah, that's my point. Yeah. Like, I, I, I don't think you can to... suddenly say go backwards and, and delete words that had real meaning because someone has perverted it because it never stops. It just it just becomes constantly having to update the language for people's feelings. I don't think that that we should be doing that. So you would never call me a f in my face, right? Well, I don't, I, why would I just randomly call you a f
I'm just, I mean, have you ever I seen mean, the Louis C.K. skit word on? Have you ever seen the Louis C.K. skit on? Fa- uh, no, I like Louis C.K., but I don't think I've ever seen you a skit watch on. Watch it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, no, but you would never call like a gay person that to their face. That seems like an absurd, like, why? no, of course, I'm not just going around. I'm a 35 year old mother. I don't go around being like, hey, you're a f-. Like, that's just like, I'm not 18 years old. Like, I'm not going around calling people names, period. I wouldn't go up to a fat person and call them names. I wouldn't call it just like a, it's an absurd thing to be going around pointing and calling people names because I don't like them. I would no. So the answer is no, I would not. Do you do you use the N word? No, I don't. So yeah, obviously we see Don Lemon just asking really stupid questions, but perhaps there's a legitimate point there. Yes, language does evolve over time. The point is, is that what's evolving right now is not natural. This is not just people come up with new words, other words become archaic. This is more so a matter of they are forcefully changing the language, not because people want to change language or do it naturally, but rather because it appeases the feelings of a bunch of crazy, insane lunatics. And I think that's what it's really about. But okay, we now transition to the part where, of course, I mean, we had to expect this. Don Lemon accuses Candace Owens of being a conspiracy theorist, but the biggest reason he says so, okay, what do you think? Well, of all the things Candace Owens believes, what do you think Don Lemon is going to call out? It's the fact that she questions the assassination of JFK, which I didn't even know that was still a conspiracy theory. I thought it was a pretty mainstream accepted idea in America that, yes, a lot of other things went on there. Yes, Lee Harvey Oswald did not act alone. But apparently to Don Lemon, questioning JFK's assassination is highly offensive. For what reason exactly? Let's take a listen and find out. The CIA killed JFK. Yes, I believe that. You do. Why is that? Because there would be no other reason for them to lock down the files as for as long as they did and then come up with a stupid Russia did it thing that long. The only time you would lock down files like that regarding a, the a president, sitting president being shot. And by the way, if they knew Russia had done it, we would have gone to full blown war because they would have killed the sitting president. And also because, and this is a very interesting fact that I learned in this book, Chaos, that people should uh, read and actually become very informed about this. The individual that shot the individual who shot JFK, his name was Jacob Rubenstein, um, was subsequently MK Ultra. That was a government program in which they had realized that if you give people a cocktail of drugs, you could essentially not brainwash them, but you could turn like you could make them crazy instantly. They could give you schizophrenia instantly. So the doctor that was behind that, Dr. Leslie, that this is all a fact, by the way. This is not like these are declassified. You see, the guys you see are, Don Lemon laughing at it. He thinks it's laughable. You believe that the CIA might have been involved in JFK's assassination? What a ridiculous idea. It's not like this is something that's been floated by both liberals and conservatives for years. And there's pretty strong evidence there. OK, who worked on this for 22 years, 22 years of his life working on this was Tom O'Neill. So I know you're laughing, but I'm encouraging you to actually read it. It could just be something you didn't know. It's, the book is called Chaos, the CIA, okay. the 1960s and MK Ultra. And um, they MK Ultra, admittedly, in the documents, they MK Ultra Jacob Rubenstein, which is why the judge on the day that he appeared, mm-hmm. uh, the second day that he appeared, said, what happened to him? I was speaking to him totally fine yesterday. And now he, they're, you're telling me that he's legally insane. But, but what I want you to know is, and I think people, the book is called Chaos, as you said, people mm-hmm. read it. Some of the things that you're mentioning and the names that you're mentioning have been written about before. And just as maybe you weren't aware of the birth certificate, the other things, perhaps you weren't aware of um, the investigation. Investigations that have taken place. You just can't that. shoot a president in, in like in, in broad daylight, and then we pretend we don't know who did it. That's just that it's. It, it, you have to be a conspiracy theorist to believe our government had nothing to do with the shooting of JFK. That's. I, I agree. To be honest, my okay. point. It's just it's too ridiculous. Okay, I'll disagree with that because uh, you know I just don't. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. Yeah, do you, no, do you're you take <laughs> when, Do you take offense when people call you a conspiracy theorist? Do you think what? Do you take offense when people call you? No, a because I've studied the history of psychology in this country. And I know that that term was actually entered into the American mindset after the shooting of JFK. They started using the term conspiracy theory to make people if, get off of their tail or not ask questions by making it seem like it's crazy to want to know who shot a sitting president in broad daylight. 
How dare you question the assassination of JFK? You must be some type of crazy conspiracy theorist. It's totally crazy to think something else went on there. You know, I always found this one particularly funny and really telling because let's say there is a conspiracy behind JFK. And let's say that people believe that conspiracy. Really, what is the big deal unless you are someone who is trying to protect the current power structures in our country? Because when you really think about it, the people who would have been behind the JFK assassination are already dead. By the way, if you are someone on the left, I would argue you could make the case that what took out JFK, I mean, JFK is still to this day a liberal hero to many Democrats. What took him out is arguably at the time back then, maybe a more right wing anti communist administrative state that was mad that he didn't want to start a war in Cuba. So there are so many ways you could spin that in a way that really is not super damaging or relevant to our current politics. But I think the only reason perhaps someone would be mad at you questioning the JFK conspiracy is only because the narrative it would conclude is actually the US government is not transparent. The regime in power does lie about things and uh, they do sometimes take extreme measures to enforce what they want. That is the only conclusion I would argue that is relevant to the JFK assassination today is, hey, the government doesn't tell the truth and the government does do things like this. And so by getting so pressed that Candace Owens questions the JFK conspiracy, the only thing Don Lemon is showing us is that I believe everything the government says and it shouldn't be allowed to question the government because really that's the only thing I have to say about the JFK assassination that again, that is relevant to what is currently happening in our country. By the way, here's another question. What does Don Lemon, I'm really curious, I wish Candace Owens asked this at the time, what does Don Lemon think about the MLK assassination then? Because it's also pretty mainstream belief that maybe the FBI or the CIA might have had something to do with that. I don't know what Don Lemon believes on that front, but I'd have to imagine if some type of black leftist was in front of the camera saying, I believe the FBI was involved in the assassination of Martin Luther King, Don Lemon wouldn't look at that saying, you're a conspiracy theorist, how dare you believe such a thing? He'd probably be like, yes, black power, I totally agree. The system is against us. But again, if that is true, then why is it so illegal to question the JFK assassination? Which again, I find to just be so ironic on so many levels because JFK was a Democrat. I understand that in the modern context, some conservatives see him as a hero because of Trump and hey, he was a populist. He challenged the system. That's their belief. But ultimately, at the end of the day, let's not forget JFK has been the liberal Democrats hero for so many decades. And now suddenly, if you point out that, hey, maybe the powers that be had a role in taking him out, which there is pretty strong evidence of. Suddenly that makes you a crazy conspiracy theorist. Don Lemon is going to laugh in your face. But yeah, folks, those are a couple of highlights of this Don Lemon, Candace Owens interview. Don Lemon is just not a serious person. But uh, I want to close out with this because this tells you a lot about who he is. Listen as Don Lemon laughs. He giggles at the worldwide persecution of Christians tells you a lot. Take a listen. It's not about the Holocaust, okay? Christians suffered too. In fact, we are the most persecuted religion in the world. And I am so sick of it. I am so sick of there can only be one victim narrative. Oh, and if you start on. talking I am about- I Christian and we are Christians not are the not, most persecuted in the world. That is Come a on. fact. But what are you me, saying that we're not the most persecuted religion like, in the world? Do you know what's happening like in Armenia? Do you know what's let happening me, in Nigeria? Me, Do you know what just happened you, in Canada? The fake story that was was propagated by all of the mainstream networks about the nuns and they found the mass burial, which allowed 85 Catholic churches to be burned to the ground in the last three years in Canada, we are still being persecuted right now. So I take okay. great offense to you I, coming in here about the sensitivities of the people that are working on your show when I'm sitting here telling you that I'm a Christian and I'm offended well, by what you're saying and you are, and you laugh, you show, mock I think Christian persecution. Very, very Do you think it's acceptable to laugh when someone tells you about Christian persecution? Because let me tell you something, if I had done that, no, if I had laughed about the Holocaust, not, I, don't think I would be chased out of play. Okay, let's just say this, it's true. Don Lemon is not only laughing at it, but it is outright genocide denial. It is. Because that does happen around the world. Genocides, ethnic cleansings of Christians are still going on. Okay? And Don Lemon laughs at it and says it is not real. And so maybe all Candace Owens is getting too heated here. No, it's actually perfectly reasonable. Okay? It is a denial 
of persecution and it's a, a denial of some cases in genocides that are still going on around the world. White society, then don't laugh. Don't laugh at Christian persecution. Don't well, do being it. Laughable is mean that the whole that the whole the name is in the term. It's do not laughable. laugh. You literally that, just laugh like when I talk about Christian persecution. Saying, Don't do that ever saying. again. Not in my presence. And that is exactly how I felt. And I just wanted people to hear that because I am so sick of this. I am so sick of people mocking Christians. It, it, they're just no. It's true. It's true. Being Christian people are literally being killed for being Christian around the world. And Don Lemon says it's not real, it's laughable, and he straight up thinks it's funny, okay? Tells you everything you need to know, all right? But what a ridiculous interview all around. Let me know your thoughts on all of this in the comment section down below. If you watched the full interview, is there anything I missed? Let me know what you like about it, what you dislike. Be sure to leave those thoughts, leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you are new. And until next time, God bless and peace.